Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of VR Download, a twice weekly show uh, where we talk about VR stuff. And uh, if you're a regular fan of the show, you know that this show is live. And uh, we're putting this on YouTube right now. If you are watching live, feel free to put your comments and questions into the chat area and we will address them as they come along if you're listening to this or watching this afterwards uh then still leave a comment because it's important that we know what people think about the show uh also this is the hardware general news show of the week and then later in the week we do a uh, games what are we playing sort of show so if this isn't your cup of tea then maybe the cup of tea Will be later in the week so uh again hi uh welcome to the show my name is kyle i'm your host today with me today hello everyone in hamilton thank you for joining us i love to demonstrate my hand signals i got all the good ones here it is it's first contact day apparently it's for I didn't. oh yeah. oh oh i did not know that it's first contact now i've actually been to bozeman montana Ooh, you know where yeah. it is nice I, I, it's is it was perfect you know, I didn't go look for any particular thing. I just, uh, I was driving from Ohio to Washington and I just, hey, look, I'm in Bozeman. And we stopped and we had some food. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just kind of fun to say that I've been there, you know, first contact. Lovely. Nice. All right. Well, I'm should jealous. we get into the news, Ian? Yep. I think we've got Let's a couple things here that we want to talk about. All right. Well, oh, and uh, let me check here. Do we have chatters? Chatters, yes. Cool, groovy, amazing. Good to see that. All right. First piece of news today is the Quest 2 outsells every previous Oculus headset combined. Facebook says Oculus Quest 2 has already outsold not just its predecessor, the OG Quest, but all of its predecessors combined. Now, that uh, we've got all the headsets up here. So we've got the uh, CV1 or just plain Oculus Rift. We've got the Go. We've got Quest 1, Rift S. And all the way over there by Ian is the Quest 2, which is what I am currently using. Now, Ian, I have to ask you do you own all of these? I do. I own multiples of some of these. I've, this is the only one that maybe may, may be operational. Like I, I suppose my original. No, there, there. I've got it. So my original Rift is is there's a. I've got a dead one, but my kid has one. Uh, so I've I've taken hers because I want her to be in a Quest too, since mm. it's lighter and more comfortable. And uh, the dead one is is still out there, but I've got the second one. I want to make sure I've got an operational original Quest uh, that I can use. Rift S is still operational. I think I might have one or two of these in a box. And, you know, this this could still work, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so fans of the show will know that uh, Ian is not the biggest fan of the Oculus Go. I I'm am. a big fan uh, of the I... Oculus Go 2 if it ever gets made. I, Oculus Go that. 2? Shh, I don't say one. that. People are going to think it's going to come out. Yeah, I want do you one. think they should do you th what would what would the go to provide cameras take the take uh -huh. the camera layout here uh -huh. put color cameras on it so you've got four put put you know four, maybe four color cameras on this thing uh -huh. and just to sell it S sell so, it like so, that Don't, no controllers just to sell it be really nice to have like a starlink fallback because i don't know yeah are we back are, are we back? back okay sorry uh the uh Taco Bell Wi-Fi down the street <laughs> from Heaney's house. <laughs> this uh, episode was succinct, Smash Reality said. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loving it. Loving it. All right. Well, get it, getting back to the news here. Uh, we're talking about that Quest 2 outsells every previous Oculus headset combined. And we were reminiscing about all the different headsets that we have. Now, the, the important thing to realize here is that if the Quest 2 sold a million or two million headsets then that means that all of these other ones put together was less than that and so yeah. the quest 2 essentially doubled the amount of 
Oculus VR headsets that are out on the market. Am I am I saying that correctly? Uh, it, it, well, it's tough to because they still haven't given us the numbers, and we all really want the numbers. I'm appreciating the commenters here saying, please give us the numbers, Facebook. Uh, it's hard to make those, you know, really, it, yes, it's bigger than all of these combined, but how many millions for Quest 2 is still a big, big mystery. I'm really hoping that if they can get to 5 or 10 million, they'll release that figure. I, I feel mm. like we could get to 5 or 10 million within the next year, and I think if they can achieve that number, it's that they're going to see the coast is clear because they've got a price that nobody can match. And they'll be able to come out and say we're the highest selling VR headset of all time. And then maybe we'll get some real numbers. And uh, I think 10 million is the number that they're targeting, uh, as I recall it. I brought this up last week, but 10 million is kind of like this magic number that if they can achieve that many, then it's very likely there's someone in your social circle that has one too. And so you can go in together and do something. So a, a couple things that I want to address here is number one, uh, if they say that there's 10 million Quest 2s, can we assume then that there is close to 20 million, or is that ridiculous, uh, of total uh, Oculus headsets? Uh, ex how does that logic work? What? Well, I mean, if, if that has equaled all of this, then if that's 10 million, then all of this together would also be 10 million. So there'd be 20 million Oculus headsets out there. Is that, is that math not right? Well, I mean, these, these are all dead. So, I mean, like, we, we looked for it, and Rift S is not available for purchase on Lenovo's website uh, as of now, and you can't find it on Oculus' website. We've reached out to Facebook to see if they'll comment on it today. Let me check my email. And they have not responded yet. And... Uh, we're trying to find out if this is coming back. We've been warned that it's it's going to die sooner or later. We wonder if that's now on the five-year anniversary of PC VR, if Rift S is finally dead. But, you know, these are four dead headsets. This thing was available for, it might still be there for $200 if you can get a refurbished one. Um, it, the, this, if, if it's only 500000 and this is up to... Two million now. I mean, if if that's really, it's more than double. So it, it's 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 you know, it's that part of the slope where it's just rising at an extraordinary degree. And comparing what this is doing now to any of this, like we've got this marker in the sand of like, yes, this is bigger than all of these combined, but now in the next six months, it's going to be just phenomenal how much growth there's going to be. So the reason why that math is wrong then is because quite simply those other headsets aren't selling anymore. So the Quest 2 will exponentially rise. Yeah, here we go. So uh, the gap of disappointment. Yeah. That's I love, I love that. that. That's that's a great way of talking about it cuz it absolutely is and you've got the, the the original riff there and it's like comparing how much excitement hype you know, where people were in 2016 for that Rift headset to this, you know, what people waking up to Quest 2 and going, what? It's actually, it's actually good now? You mean I, you mean it's not like a thousand dollars I need to spend? Like there is just really millions of people waking up to the reality that this is legit now, not, not a whole thing you have to do. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically one of one of the things that uh, was talked about in the article that this news piece comes from is that uh, you know when will VR have its mainstream moment? Uh, it, it it may have, like it, it we it may have just happened without us actually uh, you know getting an official timestamp. Okay, here's the mainstream moment. It's uh, it, it's pretty profound to see that. Uh, do we have any interesting or insightful comments here? Yeah, okay, from... Steam numbers. So James is asking for the Steam numbers. Let's talk about the Steam numbers next because that's the other data point we All have right. in addition to this uh, sort of comment from Facebook that uh, okay. it's larger than all of the other headsets combined. Uh, can we throw those you... numbers up there? Yeah, I've got well, the numbers let me, here. Let, me, let me throw out the uh, Let me throw out the headline here. For, for that piece of news then. So it looks like 
One in four VR headsets used on Steam are Oculus Quest 2. One in every four VR headsets used on Steam is an Oculus Quest 2, according to the platform's latest hardware survey results. So, wow. I mean, that's that's pretty substantial considering that Valve has their own headsets and uh, the fact that the Quest 2 up here shows just a, uh, a squeak under a quarter of total usage with uh, growth, it seems, over month over month. Yep. And it's doing that pie thing where it's slowly Pac-Manning the rest of the market, slowly eating the rest of the market. That's what Facebook's doing. And I'm kind of losing count here on just how much above 50% Facebook headsets are at this point. You've got uh, Rift S is number two on there. And then the Index HMD, I think that should be, that's remarkable to me that Index is there at number three. Uh, you've got Vive, sort of its dominance fading. Um, and you've got some other Vives down here below. The Vive Pro is at, what, 2%. The Cosmos at 1%. And the HTC Vive Elite at 1%. So you, you're seeing Vive dropping off this uh, chart. Obviously, we could be in, we're, we're, we're rumors are, you know, we're, we're thinking that we might be due for some new hardware here from htc in the near future and uh just index here uh is, is really near the top but the 24 percent in six months uh it's been less than six months that quest 2 has been on the market and it's already a quarter of this market now it's obviously important to note uh, i actually deleted a tweet and retweeted it because i i said that uh Quest 2 ate one quarter of the market in just in less than six months. And Tipidat pointed out, is it is it eight or is it expanded the market? And yeah, sure, it is. It's Ooh. expanded the market. It's a nice little point there that uh, what we're seeing here is the share of uh, headsets on Steam is actually growing. It's still becoming a larger market all the time. But it's just remarkable to me that this very expensive Valve Index HMD is there uh, at 16%, even though it's such an expensive piece of hardware. Um, I, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i seen people comment on this. I'm just going to bring it up here again. I really wonder whether the era of only tethered headsets is gone, whether uh, most of the headsets we'll have in the future are going to have all-in-one capabilities and then a PC mode on top of that. The Index to me is like the newest headset on this list or maybe the last headset on this list that will have been a uh, a PC-only machine. Hmm. You know what number we don't have for these percentages is the total. So to, to Tip Tat's point, it, did, it, did it eat some of that or did it expand it? So is that 24% on top of, and not knowing the actual number, the total. They have the number. percentages though. The percentages is, has been growing. So you can see the total percentage on Steam as it's growing over time. And you have to assume that overall Steam is increasing too over time. So even if the percentage of VR headsets is slowly inching up, year after year, Steam adds more users overall. Uh, they, they've, they've been providing those user numbers every couple of years, roughly. We get sort of a, like an estimate of there being more than 100 million Steam accounts. And you can start to make some guesses as to how many millions of headsets there are. Yes, we don't have solid numbers, but the percentage is moving up, the overall percentage of VR headsets on Steam. And then we assume that the Steam user numbers are going up too. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know though. Actually, just to, just to be a little contrary, I, I don't I don't know if it's expanding it or I mean it obviously. Okay, I'm assuming that it is expanding, but I wonder how much because you know we were talking earlier. You and I both have multiple headsets we've upgraded over over time, and I'm sure that there are other people out there who have done the same thing. So how many people have just switched to the Quest Two from another headset that they happen to own? Does that change that at all in terms of measuring 
the 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 growth and whether it's consuming pac-man style or if it's just blowing it up and making it bigger i don't know i think there's a lot of stuff out there you know ian i i've paid attention to the tech industry for quite a while myself and i'm sure you have too is this unusual for us not to be given exact numbers of units no, sold? Of course not. No, the Facebook made a decision pretty early on after their acquisition. In fact, the last time we had real solid numbers on the size of the VR market was at the announcement of the actual consumer rift. Facebook or, or Oculus had billboards up with the country breakdowns of both DK1 and DK2, the original Oculus Rift dev kits, and you could see which countries they shipped to and the exact listed number of dev kits that Oculus mm. had shipped out to the world at that point. And then they came out and announced, this is what our consumer Oculus Rift is going to look like. And they even came out in that and said, we're shipping with a controller, a gamepad, and we're you know right behind that we're working on the Oculus Touch, and so that was kind of like the last time, uh, more than five years ago now. It's more like six years back in 2015 when Facebook actually made that announcement. That's the last time we've had real numbers. Hmm. hmm. When we had dev kits. Yeah. Do we have anything in the chat right now? Yeah, there was a comment from Charles Woods uh, that that's a really good thing to to respond to uh how many quests and quest twos are native and never use P pc vr and that's where uh, heaney thinks I, I think he's well over 50 percent uh more like the vast majority of quests probably never touch a pc and in fact we're going to get some numbers over time here that's why i think that if they can get the headset down to 200 dollars with uh, without controllers and really great hand tracking, you start seeing people buying these machines as their first computer. Like they, they skip over phones, they skip over uh, PCs and laptops and Chromebooks, and they start buying these things as their first communication computing device when it starts getting that low in price. And uh, when you get that great, when this doesn't disappear when I move them too far away from my face, Right when that when it gets that good, and uh, I think that's when we start seeing it become you know ninety five percent of these headsets never touching a PC. So James uh, says, "LOL, Ian, you're crazy." Um, I I'm going to have to uh, sort of agree with that. The idea that somebody is going to take the VR headset and have that be their first uh, consumer electronic device. You're very ambitious. I think that that's maybe, I don't know, another five years down the road, maybe. He, 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 yeah, I didn't. I didn't say it was soon. I mean, two hundred dollars. I don't know when they're actually going to hit that price. I think Facebook's going to be aggressive, and I think Facebook's going to be more aggressive than people expect. Uh, I, I think it, it's they're in this period where they're trying to catch up to Apple. And they want to make Apple hurt. Like, you, you, it's not this thing where, uh, you know, Google, Google came out and did Android in competition with iPhone back in the day. And it, it, it took up a lot of the market share that Apple kind of wanted to eat with its original iPhone. And here's Facebook with this product and price that no one else can match. And I think they're going to hit the accelerator. And uh i'll i'll yeah five years maybe that's that's true but it's still gonna be the maybe it is five years out but i still think uh i still think it's gonna happen I, heaney can clip this out and use it to uh to hold over you later when when <laughs> facebook actually does this but i would uh, love heaney, that talk in my ear and tell me if i'm on the right track here but i think it's gonna happen i think people will <laughs> uh, carmack has talked about this so if you go back and watch the original video of John Carmack in 2012-ish, uh, maybe, yeah, at, at E3 in 2012, I think, where he's describing 2019, you know, 2018 Oculus Go and then 2019 uh, Oculus Quest. He's, he's describing a device that many years into the future that's run on Android, completely standalone, using cameras for inside-out tracking, 
And he's seeing this device that's eventually going to be this compelling. And I believe at one of the Oculus Connect conferences, he described picking this device up as your phone. I should. I should hear this thing ringing, and I can pick it up and answer a phone call in it. I should do it. It should happen. I'm calling you right now. So yeah. that's uh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, and we'll see. You know, that's what's lovely about uh, this this field is that we don't really know. Uh, we can see the writing on the wall of where it might head next. But uh, yeah, I would as much as I'd love to agree with you, Ian. I, I'm I'm wondering how long that'll take. That that'd be interesting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh man. All right. Well, hey, let's move on to the next piece of news which i think is kind of interesting uh snapchat to launch ar glasses this year for developers snapchat reportedly plans to ship ar glasses to developers and creators as early as this year and so uh for those of you out there in developer land know that you kind of need to have the hardware to be able to make develop to develop apps and games for a piece of hardware, so we've seen Snapchat uh, little kiosks magically appear around places, little little vending machines. Uh, you know, you, you stick your credit card in, it takes a couple hundred dollars away, and you get a pair of glasses. That's basically a glorified camera. Um, Snapchat needs to step up if they're going to come out with uh, spectacles that are spectacular what do they need mm. to do ian all right so let's also talk about niantic in here as well because uh we've been following this trend for a while and uh i can't necessarily see what's on i think i'm like a slide behind sometimes what's up here on the screen but uh i would love for heaney to throw up the qualcomm reference design hmd that they showed off uh recently within the last few months so Qualcomm is the chip designer, the chip maker in a lot of these mobile devices, and they make reference designs that a lot of other companies use to develop their products on. And uh, Niantic, the maker of Pokemon Go, is working with Qualcomm. They've got one of these reference designs. And Snapchat, the thing about them that's been really confusing is their marketing has been very unclear about whether these things have displays in them in the previous iteration. So uh, Spectacles 1, 2, 3, I kept looking at their marketing materials going, wait, is this AR? And you had to like really dig in and realize, wait, there actually is no display system inside these glasses. And uh, what we're hearing is that they're probably going to uh, insert a display system into the next generation. They're going to reveal them pretty soon. And we've obviously got this tease from Niantic, the maker of Pokemon Go, that they've got their own uh, reference design, their own headset that's built on this Qualcomm reference design. It's, it's sort of hinted that what you're seeing here is the, the edge of uh, glasses, and then you've got the display system here, the rim of a, of a lens, and I believe it's the same uh, tethered reference design that we're seeing out of Qualcomm. Now, the idea here with, with that Qualcomm has talked about is that this will be tethered to a phone, probably. It'll have a wire down to a phone. It'll split the processing, so some of the some of the processing will be done inside the glasses. Some of the processing will be done inside the phone nearby, and you'll get some performance gains out of splitting the processing across the two devices. But it's just really important to keep in mind that we are still orders of magnitude away from this being uh, slim enough and not power hungry enough that you'll want to wear it all day long. There's, a, there's of course, also the issue of uh, opaque visuals. So even though these glasses will be able to show you objects uh, in front of you, if you're looking at a really bright object or even outdoors, those objects won't necessarily look completely solid. You'll be able to see through them sort of like that um, that hologram that you see in uh, Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 is sort of my, my go-to now, that, that hologram joy uh, that they show <laughs> off in that movie. You can see through her all the time, and I think for a long, long time, that's going to be the state of pass-through AR glasses. 
something like this uh and, and you brought up the niantic as well the um the the pokemon go uh glasses i'm not certain that this technology is ready for that audience so if you're anything like me you go out you're out and about and you see little huddled groups of people around like statues at parks and uh right in front of the doors of certain restaurants and, and establishments these people are pokemoning they're 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 hunting pokemans uh they're doing this together in groups now when you look at that group you see uh old retired people you see young kids you see soccer moms you see uh, ballerinas you see a wide variety of people playing this game that is going to have to be a thousand plus dollars if it's going to have the type of technology that is required to do this in a really really good way for people to be attracted to it uh a thousand dollars for something for one game even uh, uh i I, ugh, I don't know i might do it i might do it honestly that's how much i love pokemon how deeply embedded it, it is in my life i I think it might have been one of the first games I sort of completed on my own back in the 90s, Pokemon Blue, uh, hmm. you know, going through getting the getting the book, you know, from the local store and actually going through and reading the stat lists of the different Pokemon versus each other. I mean, I sunk an, a, enormous amounts of times and there's a generation of kids out there that grew up and now they're in their their 30s and 40s who who played Pokemon back then. And they're raising their kids uh, on Pokemon Go. And if, you know, there's a certain number of features that the glasses need to have a minimum viable product to make some percentage of the buyers go out there and actually want to have a Pikachu crawling out from behind a bush. And, and that's really, that is, what I just described is literally what these glasses have to do in order for it to be a compelling enough experience. You have to have you know, a Pikachu know uh, to hide behind that bush and be able to pull a Pokeball out and throw it at him as soon as he's out from behind the bush. And as we've seen with a lot of these technologies, um, knowing that an object blocks a digital object behind it is something a lot of these, you know, occludes a digital object behind the physical object. Uh, that's something that a lot of these hardware platforms show off in concept videos, but don't actually work in in the real world when you actually uh, have the hardware on your head. But I'm gonna I'm, again, I mean, call me crazy. Uh, the commenters get it. Go, go ahead and call me crazy. But I think <laughs> that there are super fans out there who have dreamt of Pokemon being around them in their real world their whole lives and taking a pokey hunt go, going on a pokey journey is the dream reality they want to live in so like yeah here's digital objects appearing in front of my uh, physical room here uh, all provided by the hollands but it's a 3500 hundred dollar piece of hardware but having like you know a, a, a pikachu know that there's a, a real end to this table and having him come out or hide under a couch that's years away uh in, in terms of software and environmental recognition but here is uh hololens showing uh, a pokeball popping out in front of him um dr doing all of the pokemon go interactions that you would with this game uh with no controller in your hand but having him you know, walking around with him and having it know your environment to the degree that you really need it to, to, to enjoy that Pokemon experience is a technical achievement we haven't really seen shown in the real world. It's, you know, concept videos, not actually uh, a thousand uh, still. So my point is a thousand dollars. I think there's a segment of people who would pay that in order to have that experience, but only if you get a really, really, really good Pokemon experience out of it. Isn't it odd that we're using one game 
Pokemon of whatever iteration, whatever flavor or color or style or delivery method, Pokemon is is that thing that drives so many people to want to get new technology. Isn't that isn't that is it just me or is that just really amazing? I mean, uh, imagine I, I, it, it, you know yeah. Pac Man did that in the '80s. I guess I don't know. I mean, it's just it's really interesting to know that one core solid title is driving us to want to get a certain type of technology. I honestly think, yeah, no, I, I think that's I think Pokemon Go Pokemon is in a category by itself as this this dream reality. I I like that Niantic went and got the Harry Potter game to try to repeat what it did with Pokemon and it didn't do uh, it did it, it couldn't pull off the same magic that it did but there is this giant segment of Harry Potter fans out there that wanted to imagine that there's you know a hidden reality around you wherever you go and hidden doorways and magical places behind the scenes you know there's things like uh it, 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 Lord of the Rings doesn't really qualify because it always takes place in this other universe, like this hundreds of years uh, ago in a different type of Earth. Uh, Harry Potter and Pokemon all sort of like, it's like these things could actually be around us. And uh, I, it's remarkable to me that the Harry Potter game couldn't recreate that magic that Pokemon Go has. I really think... Any AR headset that's out there that doesn't have Pokemon is going to be a failure. Like, I honestly think it's that powerful a title. So just a, a really silly uh, tangent here. If they were to uh, come out with these Pokemon glasses, Niantic comes out with something really fun, and it's this extremely successful, like like ridiculously successful, do you think that we'll see a surge of... Uh, Pokemon Go, AR, uh, knockoff games, you know, or will we see other types? Like, you know, you mentioned the Harry Potter. Will that have a resurgence with this new delivery method? Will we see Digimon? Will hmm. we see, I mean, there's there's so many other methods. I mean, you could do a Ben 10 type of thing with it if you wanted to. There, there's a lot of different things that you could do. Uh, I, I wonder if we'll see a resurgence of that type of game if this type of headset becomes uh, i hate to use the word mainstream because we use it too much but becomes popular yeah i think there will be a lot of knockoffs a lot of other people trying to do similar ideas uh but we're already seeing them in roblox a lot of these pet games where you collect mm. a lot of different pets and you give them all abilities where uh yeah my my daughter loves playing uh i can't think of what its name is in roblox right now but yeah there's a lot of these types of ideas out there it's just the strength of that Pokemon brand. Uh, Kyle, can I take a minute and offer some breaking news? I did get an Absolutely. email from Facebook about the Rift S. Go. All right. Rift S is uh, still available for sale currently in some channels around the world. But as we announced last year, we plan to stop selling Rift S in 2021. Generally speaking, as channels sell out of stock, they won't be replenished moving forward that's it so Gandhi. when the rift s sells out it's gone that's breaking news right now right for you live on our show yep the rift s t o p goodbye all right well it happens you know i mean technology has a run and a couple years later poof it's gandhi all right, uh, let's see here. So we talked about the Pokemon Go AR. We we mixed that in with the uh, Snapchat information, so that's fun. Uh, do, any predictions, Ian, real quick on uh, do you think that'll be something we'll see in 2021, 2022? Uh, will it disappear like Minecraft on the on the uh, Hololens? What do you think uh, uh, for this this dream Pokemon experience? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's gonna. So I think it's interesting that Niantic is doing the sort of scan your Pokestops thing. So you as like a fan of the game can actually contribute to this map that they're building of the, of the world. They, they still, it's this technical problem that I, I don't know 
what power savings they're going to achieve by mapping the real world. It's really hard to know at this point when these headsets don't have to beam gigantic loads of information up and down to the server and back, uh, how good that experience gets, how quickly. So I, I think the the transparency problem of these head of these AR headsets not being able to work in really bright outdoor lighting, combined with the number of a, incredible engineering feats that need to be achieved for the power consumption to come down. Uh, it's going to take a while. I just, I think there's enough people out there with phones in their pockets that would be willing to plug in glasses that really do this well, uh, that I, I think we could have a couple, you could have a good Pokemon Go AR headset in the next couple of years. I just, I don't know. I'm so, I'm, it's going to take years for that standalone experience to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's tough. I, okay. I can't, I can't know. All right, let's do this. Niantic versus Snapchat. Which one of those two AR glasses is going to be the winner out of the two? Mm. <sighs> if if Snapchat doesn't have Pokemon Go, then it's not going to be a starter. Like you will you could get again, I think you've got there's so much strength in the Pokemon Go brand that I think you could you could sell a lot of Pokemon Go users on that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see what happens there with that. Uh, we'll keep you posted as more news comes out with that hardware. Moving on to the next piece of news. Tundra Tracker beats Kickstarter goal in less than 24 hours. Tundra Labs anticipated Steam VR Tundra Tracker hits Kickstarter yesterday, and well, it's doing very well. It wasn't yesterday. It was a couple days ago now, I think, um, at the time of the writing of the article. It was yesterday. Tundra uh, started off by making attachments for the traditional uh steam vr trackers i believe and uh now they're making their own i mean it makes perfectly good sense and apparently the vr community at large agrees to get the kickstarter as far along as it has a uh, lot of anticipation for this exciting product uh it's you know just like the pucks you know uh what what a puck this is gonna be it's it's uh, much smaller and uh sleeker and lighter and uh it's kind of like the bionic man or a six million dollar man it's um it's pretty substantial and a lot of people were really excited about that a seven pack tracker kit was what like six hundred and something dollars uh it's it's substantial to be able to track yourself that much but uh hey if people want that then you know make the product that people want to buy uh i will say also that uh, there are some pretty amazing people working with uh tundra from the uh og vr community so uh hello to you out there i hope you're doing wonderfully uh ian what do you think about this stuff it's pretty remarkable that they're at nearly a million with two months left, I mean, they're going to raise a lot of money out of this Kickstarter project. Oh, yeah. But I'm looking at their ship date of September 2021. <sighs> it's tough. It's a Kickstarter because... ship date, dude. It's a Kickstarter ship yeah. date. <laughs> so so if you if you sort of give that the, the, the plus or minus six months to a year, that Kickstarter projects, you know, good Kickstarter projects miss by, you're talking, okay, let's let's – Great. I hope they ship in September 2021. That's good on them. But let's say this ships in May of 2022, right? How good is the inside out tracking on Quest by then? And what hardware is Facebook shipping by then? And where is Apple on it on shipping its hardware? But like, I don't know that we're going to get full body tracking out of a Quest 2. But like you could still, you know, those avatars that are coming from Facebook show more of an upper body, and I'm I'm curious how far we get. Obviously, this is targeting a different crowd and a different use case. Full body tracking. There was a video I saw out there on Twitter, just with with a lot of these trackers or a lot of trackers on the body. Might have been the new Vive trackers, actually, not these uh, Tundra trackers. But it's amazing how good the full body tracking looks when you've got a lot of these hooked up. But it's just not the path 
to consumer mainstream millions and millions of people. You can't, you can't put that much equipment on a human body to, for, for that expensive a cost and still appeal to a market of millions. So I'm, I'm really curious if you go down a year and a year and a half down the road, and if these things miss their target ship date on Kickstarter, uh, what kind of quality of inside out full body tracking we might be in. It's going to be interesting. So Ian, I have, I have a question. Uh, you personally, are there games that use the hand tracking on the quest Two, but you prefer to use the controller because it's more precise? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the number of controllers, the number of games that support both input methods is not large at this point. So, uh, cubism, uh, the hand, the, the Oculus, uh, the hand tracking, hand lab tracking, I keep confusing it. Hand tracking lab, hand tracking lab was the one I reviewed last week, gave it four out of uh, five stars, credible experience with hand tracking, but buggy as absolutely. So there was one, I, I'll, I'll explain this one. There was one exp one of the puzzles in, uh, that game you have a force field in front of you right here and you get telekinesis. The, the, the puzzle actually lets you have telekinesis. So with the right gesture of your fingers, you can grab a block on the other side of this wall of this force field and pick it up with telekinesis and move it into a cup on the other side of this wall. Cause you can't actually put your hands through the force field. You have to remotely hold on to this thing and what I realized was there was this way of like moving your fingers ever so slightly to change, to, to let the block drift. If you released your fingers this much, the block would drift in whatever direction you released it. And if you moved your fingers this much, the block would stay in place. And so I realized if I could just do this just enough, the block would float in the right direction. And I'm feeling like Wanda in WandaVision trying to do this careful little maneuver with my fingertips. And I spent a, a, a freaking hour bashing my head against this puzzle because I was convinced that if I did this just right, I would be able to, to sort all of these blocks in this puzzle. And I, I got so fed up finally, I went and got the controllers and I did the same thing, this careful little movement. I did the same way of solving the puzzle and I was done with it in two minutes with the actual controllers in my hand. So uh, that wasn't the well, actual way you're supposed to solve that puzzle, by the way. It was just me being an idiot. But yeah. <laughs> well, the reason I bring that up, the reason I ask that question is because I'm, I, I understand that your logic is, is that by the time that this hardware finally comes out, that at least upper torso tracking on the Quest 2 could negate the need for this. And I'm thinking that there will still be a need for this because of the precision uh, desired with the tracking, that this will be better than cameras looking down at me. D d does that make sense to you? Yeah, the inside out track, I mean, the, sorry, the, the lighthouse base stations in the corner of your room and the ability to, you know, reach behind your back and have it still be, your stuff still be tracked it's still phenomenal and I still love it. It's amazing. It's just, it's, it's still a, uh, it's not the same market. It's not the same market size for VR that this simple inside out solution is. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Zero so chance of any body tracking from quest two cams is what Heaney's saying. And that seems right. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see. Okay. He, yeah. He, yeah. He has had to eat his hat before, though. See, I, I like the fact that in the comments here, Smashed Reality has said the haptic gloves might get cheap enough to negate complex hand tracking. I have been saying that for a long time. I'd be willing to wear gloves if the tracking was awesome and perfect and always there where I need it to be. I mean, they don't even need to be real full gloves. They can have like the cool guy little, you know, cut off fingers and, you know, I can be like a like a biker guy. Keep, keep ah. in mind, Facebook's path is that they've clearly outlined is this wristband. And so mm -hmm. if you combine the wristband on each wrist with the inside out tracking, you might have a pretty, uh, I'm curious to see how that solution 
stacks up against the outside in uh, Steam VR Lighthouse tracking solution. Just a, just a stupid tangent here. I was looking back at that uh, those those wrist straps, and I was thinking to myself, it's like, man, you can make a a, a pretty amazing, you know, Spider Man. You know, you could do the you could do the. Um, you know the toby mcguire version of it <laughs> i like how broken i like how broken yeah. we're demonstrating the hand i know it's when like we try yeah. to do that motion on both of our... <laughs> give me my fingers okay there we go all right well let's move into our last piece of news for this episode the u.s army orders up to a hundred and twenty thousand hololens ar headsets the U.S. Army signed a contract with Microsoft recently for up to 120,000 semi-custom AR headsets. The field of view is double that of HoloLens 2. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and say right now that they must have made some huge advancements in their uh, display technology to be able to even consider promising that if you look at the difference between the hololens one and the hololens two in terms of their fov fov it's um it's negligible i mean it's an increase but it's not a lot it's still very small and compared to other ar headsets that are out there right now in the market like magic leap uh, it's just not uh it's not doable for something like the military would need but the promised field of view, or at least the speculated promised field of view for this uh, Army HoloLens is, is pretty substantial. And I can't wait to hear the tech specs on this thing because it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I want to I get one of these Army helmets on my head. I, I, that would be a pretty phenomenal moment. I wonder, if they're, I wonder what NDAs they'd have to sign to make that possible. I don't want to... I don't want to go to federal prison for trying out a VR headset or you know, an AR headset, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty substantial. And obviously they they've got like a whole they've got it ruggedized and it's hel- it's a helmet that you're wearing. So it's like there's the ability to do more with that than you can do out of a uh, out of a consumer product. But obviously it's such a big, big, big win for Microsoft to be able to pioneer its technology and test it out in this kind of extreme condition in order to uh prove out uh some of these ideas long term you know I, i wonder if you go out five years into the future what microsoft is going to learn from this that they can apply to consumers And that was my big takeaway is that great now that this exists and it can be uh, funded, the the research can be funded by the U.S. military to push all this technology forward. I mean, everything about this helmet screams, uh, I want this in HoloLens 3. Uh, I I want this and I want I want this to get uh, so advanced for military purposes that it ends up becoming a consumer product as well that that's what i'm looking forward to i'm pretty excited about that uh i will say that you know just looking at the you know they've ruggedized it they've i don't i don't think this doesn't look like it flips up like the hololens 2 does any further especially with the straps and all that nonsense going on but uh boy i just i'm really kind of excited to see how this turns out now you know the fact that there's a cable and uh, whatever that little you know transformer up there is, it, it, I, I'm sure that the final product. This is probably just prototypey. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the final form that we'll actually see out on the you know battlefield will be a completely advanced and much more like I don't know. They could cover the whole thing in titanium or tungsten or something. I don't know. It could be interesting. Yeah, Heaney was saying that a couple of the capabilities that they're kind of aiming for, uh, first off, uh, I think the aiming is for a finalized version of this to be on soldiers uh, by the end of the decade. So yes, these are still in evaluation stage at this point. Uh, so it's going to take some time before this this actually becomes something that might actually see uh, real world combat. Uh, but one of the key abilities or the, the, the goals here is that you could be in a armored vehicle getting deployed to a location and you could see more or less through the walls of your 
deployment vehicle and and before you even arrive so you you pop out of the vehicle more or less ready to uh engage your your enemies um the moment you head out without having to sort of get your surroundings you already know what they are before you get out there i i gotta i gotta comment on obviously so there was protests inside microsoft for partnering with the u.s military on this project uh there's a lot of people out there that are very upset that they you know see this technology for you know its ability to connect people uh to to, to be fun uh rather than uh instruments of war and so there's uh there's obviously some very frustrated uh engineers out there um I got to point out that VR is kind of in the same boat that its earliest uses is for training people to to engage um in war uh more effectively. So, you know, a lot of these technologies if you if you look at I always think about the term drone, right? Uh drones mm-hmm. used to be used exclusively for literally dropping bombs on other countries and now it's this it's this toy that you fly around your your neighborhood uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so like it's it's i we're not making commentary here ourselves on this it's a very complicated situation it's just i want to recognize that that is out there there's a lot of people uh who work for these companies that kind of are very upset at uh their technology being used in this way but it's as i said kind of earlier it's a big win for microsoft financially I understand the concern that the developers, the people who are working on these projects don't want their work to be used to make, uh, you know, uh, killing easier or whatever, whatever their logic is. I, I understand that. I can appreciate that. But at the same time, as somebody who has family in the military, uh, I want my family to be as safe and protected and have all of the advantages that they can possibly have to keep them, to make them more advanced, to keep them safe and to be able to uh, 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 complete their objectives in a minimal amount of time so that they can come home. So th- these are, these are things, you know, technology is supposed to make life easier, better, yeah, but- uh, mm-hmm. e- even for the military, they need that as well. But we are we are not not too many years away from hearing how these things helped people kill more effectively. So yes, I, I get your thinking, but uh, there are other people on the ends of those guns uh, who will be killed, and well, uh, it may not always be a situation where, uh, you know, it, I, I get it. It's just it's going to be something we're going to have to keep an eye on, and it, it's not all you know. I get so Palmer Lucky out there on Twitter is one of the big proponents of this deal uh, of uh, Microsoft doing um, this partnership with uh, the U.S. military. Obviously, uh, Palmer Lucky, the former uh, Oculus uh, founder, creator of the Rift, uh, has his own defense company where he is partnering on defensive devices. There's a lot of people who, you know, rah rah the United States, but. The United States is just one country of hundreds on this planet, and uh, there are plenty and plenty of people on this planet that are tired of uh, uh, Americans dropping into their country to to get whatever they want done. So it's going to be something we're going to have to keep an eye on how this technology is is used and deployed. Um, I want to mention Jonas's comment here. Can't can't countries just fight and onward instead? No more war. <laughs> uh, I think of that episode of Star Trek where. Uh, the people the, the the two planets are at war with each other and uh, they have virtual simulated wars where uh, one planet drops bombs on the other planet but it's all a virtual bomb and just wherever the bomb drops everyone that would have been killed by the bomb just goes to an extermination area where they are actually exterminated uh, per the rules of this of this simulation and hmm. uh there's obviously well, episodes of that's Dark it, Mirror, that's or Black it. Mirror that are a lot like this. So, so going forward, all wars will be fought using Tactera inside VR. That's yeah. that's what's going to have to be. You know, James is saying that episode is Taste of Armageddon. That's the name of that episode. Thank you, James. Mm. 
Very good. Very good. You know, you know, just just from a technological perspective, uh, looking at the Hololens and, and knowing how Hololens works in terms of its tracking, I am so excited to see the technology that they create to make these work in a giant sand dune with nothing around but open sky and a big bright sun that sounds like a tracking nightmare to me so i'll be very excited to hear how they fix that and then bring that over to the consumer products uh one of the commenters here spencer trying to get clarification uh this is a military ruggedized version of the hololens 2 tech uh, lots of people getting confused about whether it's HoloLens 2. It's not. This is a modified version of that platform. And it's more or less, uh, as, as Jonas is sort of mentioning, this is kind of the HoloLens 3. And here we've got the field of view comparison. Heaney went out there and dug into the the data to find that uh, this is uh, the HoloLens IVAS uh, version 3, I think. And this is the the dimensions of its... Uh, field of view and you can see them sort of layered over what the hololens 2 and magically one are capable of and it's a significant significantly larger field of view mm -hmm. or so they say <laughs> we'll have to see we'll wait and see who knows maybe we'll be able to go to a expo or convention someday again and be able to try some of this stuff out so uh, I think that is the end of our news for this episode. Ian, do you have any final comments or anything from our chat that we want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, one thing I guess I'll point out that Heaney kind of got to the bottom of this. He really dug into the numbers. There was there was some suggestion that uh, the, the the contract here could be up to, I think, 120,000 units. But as Heaney kind of dug into and found it, it was just that's the high end of how many, how many units, how many headsets the the contract could actually end up resulting in. So the actual number of headsets that uh, get end up end up being used by the U.S. military in association with this Microsoft agreement could be far less than the maximum. So there were a lot of other headlines out there from other outlets that kind of confused how many headsets this equated to. And I think it's hard for you to kind of uh, evaluate the individual cost of each one of these headsets because of the way these numbers work. So don't take away too many, um, too much from sort of the size of the contract divided by the number of soldiers. It's, it's, it does the math doesn't really work that way. Yeah. Yeah. You can't really do that. All right. Well, hey, uh, as usual, I'd like to welcome all of you to go to our website, UploadVR.com, and check out all the articles that we discussed today, as well as numerous other ones that we did not discuss today. There's plenty of fresh, exciting comments and interviews and news and reviews all on UploadVR.com. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, when this video is over, go to our channel and check out what other fun, exciting stuff there is. If you want to be notified, you can join, like, subscribe, push the little bell, all that YouTuber-y type of nonsense. If you're listening via podcast, well, thank you. Definitely share it with your friends. And uh, yeah, we got more fun, exciting content for you coming down the road this week. Uh, Ian, any major things of note that the audience should be looking for? Uh, we'll have an article about that Rift S news very shortly. That's uh, rest in peace, Rift S, um, and perhaps rest in peace, the entire PC Rift line. Um, you know, I remember the last comment of note that we kind of got out of Facebook on the PC line was they'll they'll still they're still kind of interested in the PC line uh, if there was something they needed to prove with PCs. And I think everything we're seeing out of Facebook is that uh, it's a mode for an all-in-one headset, and they don't necessarily need to prove anything else with PCs. At least Facebook doesn't. So uh, rest in peace, Rift S uh, yeah. Rift and Rift. Um, it's five years on, quite an interesting path. And uh, yeah, uh, people saying we've, we've obviously got an interview with Guy Godin, uh, people talking about virtual desktop. We had uh, him in the studio to talk about uh, virtual desktop. So, if you are if you have a PC uh, that's compatible with VR, it's it's strong enough. 
go check out our story or our video where we interviewed Guy, uh, the creator of Virtual Desktop. That's obviously available in the store version of the the Virtual Desktop app. So you can go get Virtual Desktop, hook it up to your PC wirelessly, and have a uh, a PC VR experience, or obviously do the Oculus Link wired connection with a with most USB cables, and that's that's going to be PC VR f- going forward from uh, from Facebook until they announce their you know wireless link or or Air yep. Link, whatever they decide to call it. No, no more three hundred dollar uh, headsets, just uh, seventy dollar cables. All right, well that has been our show for today. Thank you all very much for watching and or listening. We'll see you in the future. Bye-bye.